Hi everybody, welcome back to the Master Flow Plumbing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about gas pipe. Before we begin though, gas is a very dangerous thing. In my particular state, in Michigan, plumbers are not, are not all necessarily licensed to do gas line work. The conception that people have, because it did used to belong to us back sometime in the 90s, uh, they took that away from plumbers, I mean licensure anyways, and gave that to heating and cooling contractors who possess a mechanical license. However, as plumbers, we are still allowed to do some basic stuff with gas piping, especially when we're hooking up water heaters, things of that nature. We don't have to stop what we're doing and hire a mechanical license to actually come in and do that for us. We are allowed to do it. Before we you know, get too much into to it, I'd like you to click that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner down there and then we're going to go ahead and you know, begin on this. Now the most important thing when working with gas pipe is sealing the threads. And in this particular case I use a general purpose uh, you know, thread sealant called the green stock. I like it the best. Um, however, it is a little bit messy if you get it on you. It will turn your, your clothes green and doesn't like to come back off. Again, the most important thing is you know working with gas is to make sure you do get these threads sealed up really well. So what I do is I do this and get it all wrapped around there. And I am sorry folks, we're doing this in the shop and we are using a vise to hold this side of it because we're just filming a video here. We're not actually hooking up a gas line in somebody's house. Um, if I was, it'd be pretty difficult to do. So you wanna make sure you get that all the way around. You wanna make sure you get all your threads sealed up really good. You know, with this stuff here and you're gonna get it on there and if you're a little messy you can always wipe it off later so at that point we're just gonna use a coupling and we're gonna put two pieces together today so I'm gonna go ahead and get this threaded on here first now common thing I see people do is they will go ahead and get their their next piece all sorted and ready to go on there and then I see apprentices and other people actually do this They'll take their channel locks at this point and they'll begin tightening this side. And as they do, this will begin to turn and tighten onto that. And this tightens into that at the same time. That is the wrong way to do it. Um, you want to tighten each fitting individually. I always like to use a pipe wrench instead of channel locks on these just because I get a better bite with it. So in this particular case is a cute little pipe wrench that I actually have that I use all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to tighten that coupling onto this fitting first. Until I get it snug and then I'm going to use this to hold back on it. Use a pair of channel locks to hold back on it. We're going to go ahead and get this tightened on. Pipe wrenches are definitely cumbersome to use compared to the channel locks. But we're going to go ahead and get that tightened on there. Now there is no... It really kind of comes down to the fitting and the thread and the machine that cut the thread. Some people think you got to tighten these things down until you don't see any threads left. That is just not true. Um, pipe threads are tapered, so the more you tighten it, the bigger they're going to get. Uh, so it is very uncommon to actually get them to where you don't see any threads unless the threads just weren't done correctly to begin with. Uh, so in this particular case, I'll show you actually how you could do this with a pair of channel locks. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these adjusted so it fits that piece of half inch black iron pipe there really good. I'm going to hold back on that. Now, now that I had this side tightened onto that, I'm just going to tighten this one into this the same way. You always want to hold back with whatever you're tightening into right there. You want to make sure you hold back on it so that you don't break anything or spin something loose. Real, real important with gas pipe, especially if you're taking it apart, but even putting it together. What you don't want to do is you don't want to disturb the next fitting down the line. It may be two feet away, it may be 15 feet away, but you don't want to rotate the entire pipe at the next fitting down, whether you're taking it apart or putting it in. If you do that, you need to disassemble it and you need to reseal that thread wherever that is, wherever it moved. So don't do that. Um, so when it's all said and done and you have it put together, it comes time to actually turn the gas back on and test it. There's different ways. The crazier things that you'll see a plumber or a heating guy sometimes do will be to use a Bic lighter. It's not advised uh, to do that. Obviously, you know, if there's a leak on there, you know, you're going to get a little bit of a flame coming out of there. I've done it. To me, it's probably the... the, the <laughs> The most definite way to know if you have a leak, because um, if there is gas leaking, natural gas or propane leaking out of that fitting right there and you hit it with an open flame, yeah, you're going to know. You're going to know there was a leak. The safest way is actually to use some type of a leak detector 
agent of some kind. This particular stuff is uh, made by Black Swan. It locates gas leaks. Um, you would actually take some of that and you would actually squirt it onto the joint right there and it'll bubble. Okay, the pressure from, you know, even though natural gas is very, very low pressure, it's maybe about a half a PSI or so, um, it will cause this agent here to bubble. It's basically the same thing as soap and water, which is another method to test for gas leak. You can actually take some dish soap and mix it with a little bit of water and use like a paintbrush almost, just get it stirred up there and dab that onto that joint right there and watch and see if anything starts to bubble off of it. And that's how you'll know if there's a leak on a gas line. There are other more expensive methods the gas company often uses an electronic device I've not sure exactly what they're called I've I've heard the uh, gas company actually refer to them as a sniffer before so or an electronic sniffer however I have actually seen those give false readings before I actually had a gas company one time come out and identify a leak at a customer's house and then I showed up and started using the the, the uh, leak detector agent and you know I just couldn't find it um, you know, and ultimately they came back and checked it again, and guess what? They couldn't find it again. So I'm, I'm old school, I guess, and I don't trust these newfangled devices, you know, completely. But the soap and water or the leak agent detector, you know, they're pretty foolproof. You don't, you know, don't recommend you as the homeowner actually use the lighter trick. You know, guys who do this for a living, if you see them doing it, you have to just trust that they want to go home at the end of the day. They don't want to blow themselves up either. However, it's not the correct way to do it. So with that said, that is actually how you would tighten down a gas pipe fitting. I want to remind you guys to click that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner down there. And you folks have a wonderful day.